Today we're going to improve the braking performance on our 2019 Mustang GT with help from Hawk Performance. We're here with Taylor from Hawk Performance. Tell us about the stuff you brought today we're going to be installing on our 2019. So we brought a set of our Performance Talon rotors. They're cross-drilled and slotted and they feature Hawk's proprietary uh, slot pattern machined into each face of the rotor. And what was the reason behind that over your conventional slot? We tried a different slot patterns and we really saw an increase in performance on our dyno testing with this shape. And what kind of pads are we going with here? Our popular HP Plus formula. Uh, this is really popular for people that want to drive their car on the street and also take it to track. So if we want to take this car and drift it or track day or whatever, but still be normal on the street, they're fine. And what kind of I mean, what kind of noise and dust can we expect out of this pad versus a like a stock pad? So being a performance pad, it will be a little bit more dusty, a little bit more noisy because it's on the edge of a track pad. Now, I see you brought some fluid along as well. Tell us about that. So one of the things people forget when they do a brake upgrade is they forget to change the fluid. So over time, the boiling temperature of the brake fluid does degrade due to moisture absorption. Okay. So it's a great time to, when you're doing the brakes is to upgrade the fluid. So even on a fairly new car, there's the benefit of the fluid, not just, I mean, from a performance standpoint, obviously you said it's got a better boiling point, stuff like that. But even on a newer car, you said you still want to upgrade that. Definitely. And, and normally you do it on a street car based around two years. Okay, cool. Let's get started with the installation. All right, so we have the car up in the air, the wheels are off. What's the first step? So first we're gonna do is drive this retaining pin out using a punch and a hammer. Then the whole clip comes out. So now we're gonna remove the center bolt. On this car, it's a 13 millimeter. Sometimes you have to give that center pin a little bit of a tap on the back and it'll come out. So now we can actually remove the pads out of the caliper. With all the clips and pins out, they'll actually just slide right out of the caliper. So behind the caliper, there are two bolts that hold it to the spindle, so we'll remove those next. So now with the two bolts out, we can take the caliper off. It just slides off over the brake rotor then we're going to sit it over here safely on the subframe, making sure we don't kink the brake hose. So now with the caliper off, we can take the rotor off the hub. Sometimes these stick, and you might have to use a mallet. So in this case, we'll give it a couple taps. It's pretty loose. Slide it right off the hub. So today we're going to install one of Hawk Performance's Talon rotors. This one's cross-drilled and slotted. It features our Magni coating. This is a dark gray coating that helps with corrosion resistance as well as easy bedding in of the brakes. So the coating will wear off the friction surface, but it'll stay in the veins and it'll stay on the hub. So this brake rotor installs just like the OE rotor, slides right over the hub, and you're good to go. So next we'll get together uh, the caliper and the pads and install the caliper. We're also gonna take all the pad retention hardware and clean off all this dirt and grime and debris. So now with the rotor mounted up, I'm going to take the caliper from where we put it and slide it over the rotor and then bolt it back to the spindle. So now we're ready to prep this pad for installation. Um, always check where the wear indicator tab is. I like to put that in the outboard position. Then also we're going to apply some of this grease from the gearhead grease pack that's included with your pads. We're going to spread it around the backing plate it kind of helps dampen some squealing or noise. So now that we've prepped these pads, we're ready to slide them into the caliper. Make sure you don't get any of that grease on the actual friction surface. They both just slide right in. Now we're ready to reinstall all of the brake hardware. We're gonna start by installing the center bolt. So 
So now that we have the center bolt and the lower retention pin in, we can put the whole hardware back on. So we hook it around. And the best way to do is to hold your hand up top with your thumb and then reinsert the pin from the back side. This can be pretty tricky. All right, now that we've wrapped up on this side, we're gonna duplicate the process on the other corner, and then we're gonna move on to the rear. Now that we've wrapped up the front, we're gonna move on to the rear. The first step's gonna be removing the caliper and the caliper bracket. So first, we're gonna remove the two caliper retaining bolts. So on the back side, there are two more bolts that hold the caliper bracket in. We'll remove those and remove the bracket. Cool. And then the caliper bracket will slide off over the rotor. So now with the caliper off, we can go ahead and slide the rotor right off the hub. Now we're uh, gonna remove these pads out of the caliper bracket. They just pop right out of the hardware. So after you remove the pads, then pop these clips out of the caliper bracket. And then we're gonna go ahead and clean all this dirt and grime out of these clips. It's a good idea to clean any, uh, any debris you may see in these channels where that hardware sits. So this Hawk pad in HP Plus has more surface area than the OE pad, which will give you better braking ability in the rear. So when you're installing the rotor, make sure that you do have the correctly marked right or left side as the cross drilled and slotted pattern is directional. So this Talon rotor also slides right on the hub, just like the OE rotor. And I'll be ready to install the caliper. So now these clips are clean, we can go ahead and snap them right back into the caliper bracket. We always wanna make sure these, these pins slide freely in the bracket. And if they don't, you just wanna disassemble them and grease them. And now you'll also wanna make sure you put grease into each clip where the pad rides in that channel. So now we're ready to install the caliper bracket. It just slides over the rotor and bolts in the back. So now we're ready to install the pad into the caliper bracket. We always put the wear indicator pad on the outboard position. And then once you finish the outboard pad, you install the inboard pad. And then before we put the caliper back on, then we'll also spread some grease on the backing plate. It helps with noise. We'll do that on the, on the inside and the outside. Depending on how worn the OE pads are, you may have to thread the piston back into the caliper and this tool is available pretty much every auto parts store across the country. Now we're ready to install the caliper. It just slides right over the bracket, over the pad, and then you're ready to put your two bolts in to retain it into the bracket. So now this corner is complete. We'll replicate the process on the other side. And now the pad and rotor installation is complete. So we got the pad and rotors done. Now at this point, we're actually going to open up the bleeders and drain the factory fluid so we can upgrade to our Hawk fluid. It is not necessary to do this when doing a pad and rotor swap. We're just doing it because we want the better fluid in our brakes. And then you're gonna show us a proper process for bedding them, correct? Correct. Cool. All right, so we got our new pads and rotors on, the fluid's in, everything's topped off and bled. What is the process here? What do we want to do? So first we want to do about six to eight stops at a medium street speed. So about 30, 35 miles an hour okay. to five miles an hour. You, so you don't should, completely stop. Definitely not. 30 and then. And you can hit the brakes pretty hard too. So 
So you always want to keep rolling so you don't get a, a high spot of friction material transferred to the rotor. Yeah. for SEMA, we upgraded the rotors but never got a chance to bed it in properly and it definitely made more noise than we liked. Yeah. Even with the OE pads. Yeah. Alright, so now we want to take it out on the highway and get a little faster. Yeah. Try to do like six, same thing, about six to eight stops really. Okay. And you can go from, this will be on the highway, like 60 down to 30. Okay, so we don't go to back to five. Even. No, if someone's on a highway, that can be kind of challenging. Yeah, so. Do I want to hit it like hard on the brakes or? Yeah, you want to brake pretty hard. That's what you want. You want to actually feel it almost lock up like that. Yeah. yeah you really want to simulate like a track style stop. Okay. Hey, you feel the ABS working now? Yeah. Do like two more probably. Yeah, I'll do two more, and then we'll try to be as easy as possible. I don't let them cool down. So it's really important to make sure you really let the pack cool back down. Okay, so get up and... Yeah, it feels better now, I can feel it. Cool. All right, now we just go for a ride? Yeah, just cruise around, let it cool down. And... Is there anything else we have to do with these, you know, once we're finished with this? Is there any kind of, any other processes we got to worry about? Anything we should check after we've been driving it for a little while? Really, you're pretty good after you follow the bedding procedure. If in the future you start to hear some more noise or maybe a harder pedal, you can okay. repeat the bedding procedure. Okay. But you should be good if you follow it to the T. Okay. And how long should we drive it for now? I'd say just maybe about 10 minutes. Okay, so we'll go down the highway a little bit and just cruise out. Yeah, it's important not to drag or ride the brake afterwards. When okay, so no dragging on the brakes. You, know, you want to do the hard stops like that, some slower speed hard stops, some higher speed hard stops and then basically go for a ride and kind of hit the brake as little as possible. Yep, just let them cool back down to ambient temperature as close as you can get. Any difference in the process, cold weather, warm weather, does it matter? No, it's just a little more difficult in the, in the cold. Cold, I think, yeah, I was getting them up the temperature. Yeah. yeah, they feel good. Yeah, so the brakes feel really, really good. Um, like I said, our, our old setup with a good rotor, but we had a stock pad and they were never actually bedded properly, so we had some squealing and some issues. You know, this feels world's better. They're quiet, they're definitely grabbing, they feel great on the car. The insulation was pretty straightforward. I mean, if you want to upgrade the fluid like we did, like they said, every two years or so, it's a good idea to replace the fluid in case of our car. It's fairly new, but we did it anyway. But no, they feel great. You know, thanks again for coming out and if you're looking for Hawk Performance parts for your Mustang, Focus, or Fiesta, cjponyparts.com. Thanks for having me. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that video. Make sure you click on the CJ button so you subscribe for future videos and click the corner up here for more videos for your Mustang.